Welcome to module 14 called TNT Shadow. You know the highs and lows of a TNT are major support resistances, and you know that we use them to enter strategies. However, if you see a TNT in the past, the support resistance of TNTs in the past, which are called shadows, they can sit there and stop you from becoming profitable or even declare a loss for you. So you have to pay attention to these TNT shadows that are TNTs in the past. So let's go for the background. TNT high and low in the past can act as major support resistances. They can become obstacles to reach your target. They could even interfere in your two bar validation too. So you have to pay attention to these TNTs and the support resistances that they can sit there and offer. Let's now go through and see which TNT in the past, the highs and lows that will come back and haunt our current situation. We're going to take the same method that we did in the IMTF side to determine if the IMTF crosses are support or resistances or not, or they need to be tested in the future to determine that. The problem with the TNT is it has two sides to it, whereas the IMTF only has one. So let's discuss one side step by step, and then we'll bring in the other side. So on the IMTF side, if this was a cross, if you have two real bars, then the cross becomes a support. Same thing for a TNT. You broke the high of that TNT and you did it with two real bars. When you do that, the low of the TNT becomes a confirmed support right there. Okay. Not the high, but the low of the TNT. Okay. If you have a situation where you have a real bar that broke it, that makes this a possible support, then you have a fake bar. You have to come down here and test this to determine if this is going to be a support or not. So just like the IMTF, when you come here, you need to test and hold it. If it came here and broke right below it, this TNT low is not a support at all. It has to test and hold it. Once it tests and hold it, now you have to wait for the next real bar. If the next real bar is bullish, this now gets confirmed as a support. If the next real bar is bearish, this is no longer support at all. This is the same way we do IMTF. You're doing the same thing for TNT, but it's the low of the TNT when you break the high. If this was a bearish trade where you broke the low, you're looking to validate the top of the TNT as a resistance. Okay, so we've covered the scenario where you have two real bars, bullish bars here that confirm the support right away. We cover the situation where the first bar is real to activate this as a possible uh, support. If this is not real, that does not activate as a possible support at all. This is real. That's not real at all. So now we have to come back here and test and hold this and then do a real bullish bar to make that low, that TNT, a real support. Okay. Now we've discussed all the situations to make the low of that TNT a major support resistance. Now we're going to discuss the high of that TNT. Once you break the high or low of that TNT, then what you need to do is come back and retest this and hold it and make a real bar. It can make a real bar within the same bar it tested it, or it could be later on, whichever it is the case. In this example here, we closed above it here. Now we're on the second bar for this support here. On this bar here, it came back, tested the high of the TNT, which is what we wanted, and hold. Now it's going to make a real bar. In this example, it made a real bar right away on this bar here. So by doing that, this now confirmed this as a support. Also, this is the second bar here. So that confirmed that as a support here. So when this bar got validated for the two, bar, two bars, this automatically, this TNT had created two confirmed supports right away. Okay. In this example here, 
you what did you do you closed above it here this confirmed the bottom support but you did not test the high of that TNT at all so this TNT high cannot be counted as a support resistance at all until it comes back and test it. It came back and tested and held, which is perfect. Now what it needs to do is we need to wait for the next real bar. If the next real bar is bearish, this, is no, this will not be a support resistance at all. If the next real bar is bullish, then this will be confirmed as a support too. Okay, so you could have situations where the low of that TNT is a support resistance and the high at the same time, or you may have situations where one or the other can be support resistances. You've got to go through the validation process completely. Let's go for some examples. Here's the current bar here. I'm looking backwards. Here's a TNT. We broke the high here. It was real. Broke the high here. It was real. When that happened, this low of this team T became a support right there. Okay. So that is a support there. Now the high of this team T, we don't know. Well, over here, what did it do? It came back and tested it right there and also made a real bar. So the high of that team T is also a major support resistance too. Okay. Over here, here's a TNT here. In this TNT, if you look at it, it was real. Second bar is not real. That means the high of this TNT, we do not know if it's a resistance at all. And that's why I changed it to a red dashed outline. Okay. The low of that TNT, if you look here, it was it closed here. Now we're looking for a pullback. It pulled back to there. It held it. Now I'm looking for the first real bar. If the first real bar is bearish, this will be confirmed as a resistance slash support. If it's the first real bar is bullish, this won't exist at all. This bar here was real bearish. Now this is activated and now that is a major resistance going forward. Here is another example here. You can see this TNT here. It broke the low here. It was not a real bar, so the high of that TNT we don't know about at all. The low we do know because it's confirmed. Now you have a TNT strategy with a green shade here and correct V trend. The entry dot is here. So this is a complete fine good entry. Reason why is the shadow is in the past. It's not on the is not interfering with your entry at all. In fact, when this bar closed, there was a question about this TNT high. It broke it. So this TNT high never was a major resistance at all because this closed above it on testing it. So this is what you have to do is when you look to enter, you have to look back to see if your entry dot or anything in going from your entry to your target, if these TNTs are going to come back and haunt you. If they do, you need to put alerts at those levels and make sure when price gets there, you watch to see what it's going to do and make sure it doesn't take away your profits or turn your trade into a losing trade. This now concludes module 14, which are TNT shadows. We went through detailed explanation to determine which highs and lows of TNTs in the past really are going to affect the current bar and your entry or your existing trade. You need to sit there and look at these TNT shadows and determine where the obstacles will be based on that before you enter uh, so that you have a clear mapping of what obstacles you're going to face to get from the entry to your target.